Well, hello everybody. We are here. We are ready to begin this special ministry time towards um, focus towards the youth, especially of the King's Revival Church family. I'm here with uh, an audience as well in the prayer room and also here with my precious firstborn daughter. Secondborn is also in the room, but uh, she doesn't she doesn't want to say hello um, yet. Tomorrow is going to be an amazing um, day with uh, Pastor Melanie and myself. We're going to minister on uh, the weapons of a woman. And you might be wondering what that is all about. It's going to be a blessing. So tune in tomorrow. But today we're going to focus on the youth. If you're between the ages of 13, to maybe even 20 I believe you fall within this category well you can argue a few years here and there whether you're still uh, within that you know category of youth well uh, if you think so, it's it's all right because it's scriptural the Bible says uh, in renew your youth and in uh, verse 31 of Isaiah 40, you will mount up with wings as an eagle so this youthfulness is, is promised in the scripture so we welcome all of you. God really ministered to her to sing this particular song. Uh, how do you pronounce it, Michaela? Lauren Daigle, or how do you what do you call it? Uh, it's a beautiful song. What what's the title of the song? You say. you say. It's called You Say. It's a beautiful song. So I'm going to be back. I'm going to allow Michaela to minister to you in song.
God for that. I hope that song, I believe that song would have ministered to you deeply. It actually ministered to me when um, Michaela said she was going to sing it. I looked at the song and I thought, wow, what a song. Um, I believe what you say of me. I remember a time when I was displeased uh, with Michaela and Havenia. You know how naughty kids can become. And I was a little displeased. And I remember the Lord ministering to me about how I shouldn't judge the seed before it's time. When you are a youth, you are still in seed form. You are still in seed form. In fact, the scripture in one, Psalm 112, verse number 2 says, it, it, the scripture calls our children seed. Your seed will be mighty on this earth. So seed refers to something very small. But God has um, instilled and imputed so much into the size of a small seed. Sometimes we look at something small and judge it too early. Instead of having it being planted in a particular place, waiting uh, until proper fertilizer is used, a proper gardener knows how to look after the horticultural aspect of the plant or the tree. And then it has to be exposed to sunlight. It has to be exposed to the rain, exposed to pruning and then fruit bearing. We as parents, we don't wait for that process. Sometimes we are a little impatient. We judge the seed too soon. So right now, youth, you are youth. I believe you are youth. And you could be even a parent watching this and you want to uh, receive some uh, impartation or some, you would, you would appreciate some pearls of wisdom uh, because if you understand what youth are going through and what's in their mindset, it will be more helpful to you as a parent to guide and instruct them in the way they should go. So let's go, get down to the crux of the matter. Michaela is taking notes. She's going to... Uh, help me read the scriptures. So we were talking about seed. Now the, the question we're trying to answer tonight is, as youth, one of the burning questions you have is, will I ever be successful in life? Can I ever be successful in life? Well, the answer is yes. But we have to start in, in a place where you define what success really is. Success in a worldly sense really means to accomplish something. When you accomplish something, you are deemed successful. But in the spiritual, every definition changes because we are spirit beings. If you are born again, if you're spirit filled, if you know Jesus as Lord of your life, then your viewpoint, that paradigm has to shift. You must have a paradigm shift. The way in which you look at the world changes the moment you are born again, the moment you come to know Jesus as Lord of your life. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter number 12 that there is the sum of all things pertaining to life is to know your creator in the days of your youth, when you are young, when you're in seed form. So the spiritual definition of success is not in really accomplishments, but in the outcome of what you have um, launched out to do, the outcome. Now, when you think of success, as a young person, as a youthful person, as youth, you might think of income. But I want to focus tonight on the outcome because success is really the outcome of everything that you're trying to do or trying to accomplish. Right now, you might be a firm believer in education, but um, you can come through your O-levels, your A-levels, have an MBA, a double accountant degree, all of that, and yet that does not make you a success the outcome of what you have achieved is what makes you a success. So in a worldly sense, success means achievements, but in a spiritual sense, it's the outcome of those achievements that I believe is real success. So I want to impart something uh, that might be helpful. We can't t teach you everything in a 30-minute broadcast, and I'm sure you appreciate that and understand that. First of all, let's focus on the word outcome. I'm going to speak about four things very quickly. Number one, we're going to focus on how the outcome of a matter um, contributes to your success. 
the outcome is the is is actually success the outcome of a thing is the success then your ability to understand how success is monitored in stages outcome stages number three your ability to understand conversions let's talk about it in a in a moment conversions and then we're going to talk about the the theos factor in this in this whole equation the, the god factor in all this thing so, so let's start with the first one success really means the outcome of what you are presently doing we we, we often think success is the is the is the process so you might buy a car that no one has and think oh I, I'm, I'm a real success now because I'm driving a car that my neighbor does not have but your focus should be what's the outcome of having that vehicle what's the outcome so outcome is what is so vital here in Psalm 144 12 Michael is going to read Psalm 144 12 let's look at what the scripture tells us let's go quickly then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Let's focus on the first part of that verse. What does it say? Our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants. Look, our sons in their youth are compared to well-nurtured plants. So a plant starts in seed form, a plant or a tree starts in seed form. It starts small and yet you don't look at the seed and say you are a success. Now stay with me now. You can look at a seed and say, oh, you are a great success. But the seed is not successful until it goes into the soil. It goes through a process. It goes through fertilizing. It goes through watering. It goes through sunlight, rain. And then if it's a tree, it has to grow, it has to uh, carry branches, then there are fruit and the fruit has to be edible. This entire process, Michaela, has to be fulfilled for one to say, I'm a success. I hope you understand that because youth are compared in Psalm 114 verse number 12 to what? Well-nurtured well plants or trees. So trees are not meant to just bring shade. So you might turn 35 one day in your life and say, ah, I'm a success. Why? Because you are providing shade. Trees are not just supposed to provide shade. It's supposed to bear fruit. You know, some trees are used for furniture. Right now we're seated in a couch. It will, you know, trees contributed to it. So where is your contribution in the future? If you want to be a success, you have to focus as youth on the outcome of what you're doing, not just what you're doing. And the outcome is the end of a thing. It's the result of what you are doing. Well-grown trees or plants, they start in seed form. You're not a success when you're a seed. It has to go to the soil. Then someone has to fertilize it. Someone has to water it. So the outcome is so vital. Then you have to expose yourself to sun and rain. You don't know if you're a success or not as youth at 19 years of age. How old are you now, Michaela? 15. 15. She's going to be 15 this year. Now, you don't know if she's a success or not until she's exposed to the, to the things out there. You need to be exposed to sunlight and, and rain. And then one day you have to produce fruit. And others in the community will, you know, test that fruit. Taste that fruit and test it and then say, hey, this is a good tree here, right here. A tree is known by its fruit, not by its fertilizer, not who watered it, all of that. So the outcome, I want you to write that down. The outcome is so vital. The next one, I have so much more to share on outcome, but we don't have time. Because of time, we go to the second one. What determines your success is also your ability to to navigate through different stages, write the word stages, stages. In Psalm 37 verse 25, Michael is going to read it for us. Listen carefully. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. Again. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. See, until like the psalmist, you're able to say, I was once young, and now I'm old. Your ability to, to, to live in different stages. You know, the thing with youth, 
is uh, they, they think they're never going to get old. As youth, they're going, they know everything. Do you feel like that? You know everything? Sometimes. You know everything. No one can tell you anything. You just know everything. You will even parent your parents. You will tell your parents, no, this is not the hairstyle. This, this is the hairstyle. This is not the music. This is the music. See, you think you're a success when you're 19 years of age or even 21. But you're not, you're not old. But like the psalmist in 37, 25 of the book of Psalm, he says, uh, of Psalm 37, 25, he says, I was young, but now I'm old. I have lived in different stages and I have seen that the righteous are not forsaken, neither their seed has been begging for bread. There's so much in that verse, but what I want you to take out of it is here is a man who is a success. King uh, David and most of the Psalms were written by him. And your ability like a king to compare your youth and your old age and say, you know what, I have managed the stages. As a young person, you're not yet married. As youth, you're not yet married. You, are, you don't know what it means to uh, look after children. You're still worried about your mobile bill and your Wi-Fi and your hi-fi and your girlfriend and your boyfriend and all of these things. These are the little things you are worried about and your branded clothing and the next vehicle and the job and social media, Instagram. You're, you're an Insta man, you know. Yeah, you're an Insta man. You're a Wi-Fi man. You're a hi-fi man. These are the things you, I mean, I'm saying that, but when I was 18, 19, I was, you know, we had our... our our share of entertainment. All I'm saying is you haven't passed through the stages to deem yourself a success. So it's your ability to pass through the stages. I hope you're getting it, Michaela. You're 15 now. You should be able to come to 45 one day, look back and say, I was once 15, but now I'm 45. And one thing I can say is this. So the ability to be a success through the stages some who are successful when they're 19, they got four A's for their A-levels. They couldn't stay married. They are, they are a failure with their families. They don't know how to, uh, you know, look after kids. They're in debt. They have gone on drugs. They're in prison. So where is the success? So success comes in stages. I hope you're getting it now. In stages. So much to say about it, but we're running out of time. Let's go to the third one. Success is measured by your by conversions. Now, conversion doesn't mean from a non-Christian you become a Christian. That's not what I mean here. You see, as youth right now, you might think education is everything. Now, I'm not trying to belittle education. Educate yourself. Love God with your mind. But your ability to convert education into learning. Education is not learning. Learning doesn't necessarily mean education. There are things I'm trying to teach Michaela and Havania in terms of learning that education may not teach them. So your ability to convert education from education to learning, you know, learn, 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 learn. There are educated guys right now watching this, educated girls right now watching this. You don't learn a thing. You don't learn anything at all. So learning is very dif different to education. So to convert, this is what I call a conversion, from education into learning, from effort into output. Do you know effort is not the same as output? You can be really putting a lot of effort, but there's no output at all in your life. So this conversion from how you thought to thinking a little different, using your painful experiences into credible experiences in your life. That's a conversion. Your uh, bad childhood, you, if you can convert it into wisdom, you might end up writing a book one day, becoming a good counselor. So conversions, your ability, life throws education at you, you turn it into learning. Uh, you go from effort into output. You go from pain into experience. You go from a bad childhood and you convert that into wisdom. Talents and hobbies, you convert it into a skill. Your ability to convert these things in your youth, youthful stages of life is what translates your life into a success. In Genesis 50, verse number 20, Genesis 50, verse number 20, we're about to conclude. I can give you all the secrets. And, uh, you know, the, uh, there's so much I can share, but we are limited with our time. And we want to stick to 30 minutes going forward. So yesterday's message on finances, I'm going to summarize it through this week and on Thursday. Now, tomorrow, 
is Pastor Melanie and I ministering uh, on the weapons of a woman. But uh, on Thursday, I want to minister on family and finance, family and finance. So uh, I'm going to be summarizing some of the things I shared with you yesterday. We've been having technical difficulties and it's because, you know, because everyone's in quarantine and in quarantine, everyone's using the network. So please, I, I hope you understand this and thank you so much. So conversions, look at Genesis 50 verse number 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. That's powerful. You intended something, but it has been converted for my own good. Genesis 50 verse number 20. You intended harm, but God has intended good through that harm. So that's a conversion. You intended this, but this is what happened. So your ability as youth to take what life has thrown at you right now, you, if you want to be a success in Christ, you can't be thinking, you know, why was I born to parents like this? How come, you know, I don't have freedom? How come I'm, you know, studying in a useless school? Or how come I don't have what others have? I don't have shoes like others. You know what? If you become a success in Christ, you can own a shoe shop. Why are you so worried about uh, temporary things like this. I am, I remember while talking about shoes, you know, I'm just, I, I would have forgotten, but see how the Holy Spirit leads. Your problem is your pathway to greatness. Because talking about shoes, there's a story, a true story about a boy who had only one pair of canvas shoes. True story, one pair of canvas shoes, who was afraid to get them dirty because if he got them dirty in the mud, you know, there's, you know, he has only one pair of canvas shoes. I think Mikhail also knows this story. Um, he was afraid to get them dirty. Comes from a poor family. Came from a poor family. But he came up with this product. He developed an idea. A product that can keep his shoes from being stained. And he would apply this product. He invented the product. He applied it on the shoe and wore it out and mud would never stick on his shoe. And today it has become a revolutionary product. Uh, he had this mindset, you know what, I can convert my problem into my own greatness. He developed a product and now he's a wealthy millionaire. He's a success on that stage. So look at how his problem contributed to his, his success. So why are you complaining about your father and your mother and you're not being educated and you don't have a degree, but you have a pedigree. So focus on this. Out stages, conversions and last but not least, the Theos factor. Now, Theos in Greek means the God factor. Now, in John chapter 15, verse 5, what does the Bible say, Michaela? In John chapter 15, verse number 5, the words of Jesus, and I conclude here. Glory to God. John chapter 15, verse number 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Audacious statement, Jesus is just explaining the kind of relationship um, we have with him. And again, is it coincidental or is it God ordained that we're talking about the tree again? The branches, how he is the wine, you are the branches. But here it is, it is compared to the vineyard. So not technically a tree, but you get the point. The branch and the, it has to be connected to the wine. Your connections... Um, determines a lot on your success, whether you become a success or not. So here the connection is the connection to Christ. The Theos factor, your ability to understand at a young age, at a very young age in your life, even before you're 15, I gave my life to Jesus. Rather, I received the life of Christ into my life when I was 16 years of age. I was God-fearing, grew up in a, a Catholic environment, and it contributed to the fear of God. But at 16, I was exposed to the nature of God like never before. And I know Him today at the age of 41, like I've never known Him when I was 16. So your success is in knowing Christ. If not, your success will have no purpose at all. It is centered on the Theos factor. Without Jesus, you can do nothing.
What about people who are doing so much without Christ? Well, Jesus himself said, you can gain the world and lose your soul. A man's life does not consist in the things he possesses. So there, you can gain the whole world without Christ. But you can gain nothing that money cannot buy without Christ. Christ brings something much more than wealth. Don't focus on the income. Focus on the outcome. Now, what are the four words I shared with you that will make you a success? Number one, outcome. outcome. Number two, stages. stages. Number three, Conver conversions. Number four, theos. If you mix those four letters around, you can come up with a word called cost. C-O-S-T. Mix the words around or mix the letters. C-O-S-T. Conversions, outcome, stages and theos. Cost. To remember what I have taught and imparted today, I suggest you remember that this is the cost for you to be successful. I leave this with you. Now, if you are youth and you are watching this broadcast and you need counsel, you need someone's help. I'm going to give you some numbers you can contact. I want to thank God for Shanaka, Binetra, Pastor Adrian and Sue and uh, Joe and Kezia for all the work that they're doing for our youth ministry. And in case in quarantine, you're, you just need someone to talk to, some guidance, some mentorship. I'm going to release some telephone numbers that you can take down and you can call. You can call and talk to one of our counselors and they'll be able to help you and guide you. 0 0773-505-082 or 0772 Got those numbers down? Let me try it one more time. 777-590-395, 773 You can pick one out of those three numbers. It's been amazing ministering to you. I'm sure this has been a blessing to you. Share the link with as many, but we have one more thing to share with you before we go. And Michaela and I are going to make way for a special guest artist who is here with us today. Now, artist is not a painter, but an artist is a precious, precious daughter of the Lord who is gifted with the grace to sing. And she has a story in Christ to share with us on another day. But she's going to sing a song that means so much to her. And Michaela, shall we make way for this, this guest artist? She has flown from far, far, far distant lands to be here with us. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But she is going to be a blessing to you. Okay. Welcome, Kaylee. She's going to sing for you. Praise God. Come, Kaylee.
Praise God. So, I'm sure it was a blessing to you um, this time of ministry. Share the link with as many people as possible. And don't forget, if you want to be successful, count the cost. That's what Jesus said. I've given you an acronym for it. Contact those numbers if you need counsel. And this quarantine period will come to an end soon. And for those of us in Sri Lanka, what a blessing. We honor our president, the armed forces, and those uh, working in the medical field, the doctors and the nurses. We honor them. We pray for them. And to those of you who are watching us from overseas, you are blessed. You are protected. Be healed. Send us your testimony. I believe the Lord has ministered to you. God bless you. And we'll catch you tomorrow, myself and Pastor Melanie, as we share with you on the weapons of